Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Los Angeles today, joined by Cindy Kamlogger. She is the first vice president of the Los Angeles Community College District, which recently looked at the question of transgender rights. New acronym. I didn't know this acronym. TGNC, Transgender Nonconforming. I didn't either. Yeah, it's a new acronym. <laughs> and actually, I'm, I'm glad that it was brought to our attention because there's actually, my daughter's in ninth grade and there is a, uh, I don't know what to call her. She was, I guess, born a, mm -hmm. a, a female, mm -hmm. but she's not transgender. She's mm -hmm. nonconforming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she's kind of, right. I don't know what it's to call it. It's a whole evolution right. Right. Yes. of gender studies mm -hmm. um, in this new era. And so talk to us about how this question came to the LACCD looking at the transgender right. nonconforming community. Absolutely. So um, I had the good fortune of um, having lunch and meeting with some advocates from the transgender community. Uh, Michaela Mendelssohn. I've interviewed yes, her. Yes, I've interviewed her. Yes, she's fantastic. She's fabulous. And she is transgender. She is transgender. She was born a genetic male. Yes. And uh, transitioned about 10 years ago. Yes. She also um, owns and runs a number of El Pollo right. Locos. I know that. I know that. And they are incredibly profitable. Right. In fact, the top performing um, restaurants in the Western right, region. Right. 30% of her employees are transgender. Right, right. And so as a result. Which is remarkable. It if you is. think about it. So it's not only remarkable, it's remarkable for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. One, because you have uh, prospective employees who feel uh, safe enough to want to work there. And you have an employer who is sensitive to those right. issues and says, I'm going to embrace you. Obviously, my bottom line is making sure that our customers get service and we make money, but I'm figuring out and committing to an environment that is inclusive. Right. That's right. She came to us, we talked, and what we realized is that we don't have any workplace curriculum mm -hmm. at our community colleges that um, focuses on this issue. So on the one hand, it's about how do you train um, employees, students who are interested in going into the workforce who are transgender right. nonconforming, right? Because there are still skill sets that you need as a prospective employee. And I would remind you, I'm sure you know this, Michaela taught me this, uh, th there had been a view that in the United States maybe there were 700,000 transgendered folks in our midst. Now UCLA came out with a mm -hmm. study and it looks like there's 1.4 million and that's transgender. That's right, not non-conforming. Right, right, right. That's true transgender. That's right. a real number. Remarkable. Yeah, I Remarkable. mean we're a country of 300 million. If you have right. 1.4 million that, that's yeah. a good number of people. And it also speaks to, I think, the climate in California where people feel comfortable enough to self-identify. Right. Right? right. So on the one hand, you have employees who need some training. And then on the other hand, you probably have employers For who sure. have a huge customer service base that can be transgender nonconforming. Mm -hmm. Well, are their employees trained? And do they have policies and practices in their manuals that talk about how to interact comfortably with this customer service base? Mm -hmm. So the idea behind the resolution and the work that we're doing now is to develop this curriculum um, that can be shared with folks that are interested in going into the workplace who are T, G, and right, C, right, right. transgender nonconforming. But I have to think that while it's important that this curriculum be developed for the TGNC community, it's important that also the employer side Correct. be brought in. And that's where Michaela Mendelssohn comes in because I know that she launched transcanwork.org mm -hmm. and she has really been a very strong advocate for talking to employers because look, in the final analysis, I do believe that we in California are charitable. Mm -hmm. We don't want to somehow make people feel out of place. Or, right. But but it is, it, look, it's hard to deny that the transgender movement, if I can call it that, is it's relatively new. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we're not really sure we're not. how to handle it. I hope it's okay I'm saying that, but you know where I'm going. Yeah, Sydney. it's yeah. evolving, right. it's evolving. And all this is going to do is say, hey, if you have a business here and you have employees mm -hmm. and you happen to sell a product or offer a service that 
everybody's interested in, right. including the transgender community. Right. It might be helpful if your folks get a little extra training on how to deal with this population, mm -hmm. right? You don't, it's not mandatory for sure, but it's another right. way that we can sort of avail ourselves and our resources to the greater community that use community colleges. So talk to us about what is happening now. I think you're gonna have a summit. So we're gonna have an awareness summit. Right, which is coming um, up. We actually, in mm. working on this, found out that we have a number of faculty and staff that are also engaged in these very same conversations. And I would presume faculty and staff that may be TGSE. Yes, yes. And I didn't even realize right. that, right? So we have a number of our classified staff, our administrators who are also very interested in this, have asked for professional development tools and resources to help them. Um, so it was impacting a larger percentage of our campuses right. than even I knew. I actually was surprised I read the resolution. And generally you hear statistics that about 5% of America's population is LGBTQ, about 5%. Um, at LACCD, your survey indicates that thirteen yes. percent self-identify as LGBTQ. That's I mean, that's, that's almost three times the, yeah. the national average. Yeah. So Who knew? this is a population that obviously uh, is there. Well, remember when you think about community college, it's accessible to all. Right. And so there are probably a number of reasons why folks don't go to four-year institutions right. or some of our traditional institutions here. We tend to think about the economics. But there are also social and psychological right. uh, challenges that folks may be dealing with, too, that prevent them or intimidate them when right. it comes to applying to go to those schools. Well, especially given that we still face challenges as it relates to bullying and otherwise right. with our LGBTQ uh, community. Right. And so talk to me about the curricular side, because that's probably, yeah. I mean, I know that's not your yeah. your space, but still, I mean, a, a, as a trustee, but that's gotta be a challenge indeed. Well, the we're trying to figure out where this will be housed. Right. So faculty are now starting to talk, would it be housed in gender studies? Ah. Would it be housed in sort of psychology? <laughs> right, yeah. um, I know, it's hard to imagine. That's beyond yeah. my pay grade. Right, I hear um, you. But the great thing is that we have folks that have expressed some interest in wanting to be involved in this. And we've done some research and we found that there are really no other community colleges that are doing this. There are really? certainly four-year institutions Not that are doing Miami, this. Not even Miami, for example, I know it's a large system. We're still looking, but right. I, we haven't been able to find anything. So, so. The, so the question becomes, if, you, if LACCD is truly a forerunner in this space, can you leverage that to help our friends in Chicago and Hawaii and, and New York and my, whatever it may be? Let's hope. Uh, where do you go from here on this? Again, I know you're a trustee, right. but where where do you go from here? So I think the next steps are to have uh, trans can work and our other LGBT uh, stakeholders uh, work with the district mm -hmm. on shaping curriculum. It will probably be, you know, convening some focus groups and right. stakeholder groups to figure out what makes the most sense. And in this instance, it, those stakeholder groups will also include folks from the business community. Which I think is critical. Yeah. Because just from my perspective, I have no doubt that LACCD will do a fantastic job with its curricular development, uh, looking to mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. an inclusive environment. But again, it's once they right. graduate, it's can they get a job? And ultimately, this is about the bottom line for right. businesses, right. right? It's businesses that want to make a profit, that want to sell their service or product, and how can they do it better? How can they have their employees interact with their customers right. more successfully? But also, how can they have employees that That's may right. be trans? That's right, I mean, that, that feels that, safe. Right, That's because right. I learned from Michaela, for example, that trans employees can be subject to abuse. Uh, harassment, right. bullying, discrimination. Right. Now. Her story includes the fact that the majority of her trans employees have um, elevated to management right, positions. Which is exciting. I'm so glad you brought this issue yeah. to the forefront. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. She is Sydney Kamlogger. She is a the first vice president of the Los Angeles Community College District. My name is Brad Pomerantz from Los Angeles. It's Local Edition.